We back at it. New show, new topics. Hit the like button, subscribe. First topic of the day. Shaq, the big diesel. Signs on with Papa John's to be their new spokesperson to try to get black people back into their good graces. Get grace. black people back into their good graces. Now, Spank, what you think about this, Smoke? Typical corporation tactics. You ain't done something bad or somebody ain't done something bad with black people, what to do? You go find a token black person to represent you to get black people back in their good graces again. Thing is, I don't know too many black people out here who just eating Papa John pizza like that in the first place. Hey, yep. And my thing with it is they doubled up. So in the beginning, they had this young uh, black woman uh, to start doing it first. And it didn't work. And now they like, well, we got to get a black celebrity. They're kind of like the way of the Democratic Party, if you think about it. We got to cater to like black women. It is a corporation. And then black celebrity. They're kind of like what they're doing here again. And my thing is, is that the dude who owned Papa John, he went in so hard, man, with his foolishness. And it just shows you how stupid people feel that black people are. That the only thing you have to do is put a celebrity name on some damn pizza and they'll run out and buy it. And then Shaq of all people. I'm not. I'm, when you say Shaq of all people, I'm not. I'm like, I ain't surprised. No, but I'm saying when I say Shaq of all people, I'm saying in the last three, four years, Shaq was someone who supported Chris Christie. He was an mm-hmm. all live matter guy. Damn. So my thing is, is how well did you think this going to work? They... Then they just said, hey, he's a black guy. He's a ball player. Everybody, sometimes everybody, it looks like everybody likes him. So let's put him on. Because it's still dudes who, who are in the NBA who, that my thing, like when I see Shaq, when I see Charles Barkley, and I see the stuff that they say, the, the, the way, like you can have dialogue with them, but then I'm not like, I had to look at no, yeah. I have had to I had to have a dialogue with them. I would had to have, take a good look at them and say like, yo, is some of the stuff they say do they look at me and say, that? or do they look at that and they say some of the stuff that they say like, is it wrong? Like it's wrong. Clearly it's wrong and it's out of place. And that's why I like because I've heard Shaq say a lot of dumb stuff, whether he was on TMZ. Yeah, or TMZ or any other place, and I'd be like, that was stupid. But then I had to start thinking that for a lot of older people who are in the shack in Charles Barkley, A ring, how much of this shit is their parents' fault? For Because a lot of their stuff are based off of things that white people have said. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that uh, baby boomer generation. The baby boomer generation and uh, the people who come out of the black church, mm-hmm. a lot of that stuff then seeped in from them pastors, man. And I, and I said constantly, man, you talk about this before, off the show, I think, about the baby boomers. You will see a connection to the black church, black celebrity. Catering to black women, that catering to black women, but not doing anything for them, but just uh, trying to manipulate them to be like, oh, we're just gonna cater to black women. We don't have to do nothing. We just have to give them attention and make them feel like they are part of America because they feel left out and they don't do anything to actually, you know, for black women. They just try to cater to them and lie to them. 
And you see the same thing that comes from black church. Um, from the black church. And this is how they go about getting black people to do what they want by loading up celebrities, catering to black women, and then say, hey, they'll, they'll go along with this. But I guess I can't, like, for the old, I can't bl- blame them because at some point, a lot of people are starting to wise up to these rules these tricks and trades that they are doing but at the same time you look at them and you say yo man you know at, at some point this shit's gonna fail like it's it gonna stop working yeah but they what what the old saying is um we're gonna got them drink out of the well until that sun bit get dry mm-hmm. that kind of what they doing now man. they doing is keep going to that well until it get dry Cause I was like, it, I don't know what. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it was some other thing they could have done, but that ain't it. Like, and I tell you about when it come down to politicians and shit who pander. I don't like it. Like right now, you got Cory Book out here with this Rosario Dawson thing. I like Rosario Dawson, but he trying to use that as a as a pandering tool for me to vote for him. I ain't doing it. I agree, and we should do a topic on Cory Booker. But I just quick off, and then I get back on the topic. But I want to ask you about what do you think about um, Rosario Dawson dating Cory Booker? But in 2016, she was a hardcore Bernie supporter, and she was against centrist Democrats and corporatist Democrats, and now she's dating one of them. Uh, hell if I know. <laughs> um, That's funny, people, right? I don't know. I mean, I, I that don't you know. disagree with somebody politically, but I guess that, that you can. Like, I guess you can do that. I'm. I'm. I don't know. Because she was going hard on Hillary Clinton in 2016. Yeah, hard. She also went hard against Obama. Some of the stuff that Obama did, but mm-hmm. I don't, like I said, I don't know. And, and that nigga is like a calling copy of Obama. Yeah, and I was was like, yo, when I first saw that, I was like, "Um, I don't know. Hell, I I doubt that he even does get any type of votes like that. Maybe you hope that she can go in there and be that person in his ear to make him do certain things. I doubt it. (laughs) Me too. But, hey, I never know. And... I like and I've I think I've said it before. If I haven't, I said it again. I have said it before, but I haven't said it on this show. I don't try politicians as far as I can throw. Me neither, man. Me neither. Hey, but and with the whole Papa John thing, is it been out there like the information about them trying to revitalize their images by hiring this black lady and now hiring Shaq? It's like, dude, you do know this stuff is being said that this is what y'all are doing. This is y'all strategy. They like, we don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Feel like it probably will, it'll work. I mean, I don't know. That's why I said with, with these big corporations. No, it, it it had to be something that said that that made them feel like this will work, or they just that that damn arrogant enough to say arrogant, arrogant, arrogant. I can't even say that damn word. Get it right, Prime. I'm trying, motherfucker. Shut up. <laughs> Arrogant. <laughs> they, they were like, yo, yeah, we just put anybody up here. Especially his celebrity. And these black people fall for it. You that know, come back to us. You know, it kind of reminds you of the dude in uh, Colorado. Remember the dude who said, I'm going to stop selling Nike stuff because they signed Cap and now six months later, the company gets shut down and he says, well, I found out that Cap had more supporters than I thought. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's like with the dude from Papa John's. He felt like, nah, I can go out here and have this racist stuff. And, hey, yeah, black people still go buy my stuff. And then when they didn't, he's like, man, I Uh-oh. guess there were more black people pissed off about this shit than I thought. Mm-hmm. That's crazy, man. Well, all right, man. Next topic. UFC. 
last night. Wonder Boy versus Pettis. Pettis in that fight was losing, was getting his ass whooped, but came through with Superman punch and KO'd him. What were your thoughts? How the hell you let that happen? <laughs> like, cause it was it looked like I ain't seen yeah most of the time I have seen people throw Superman punches except for Roman Reigns in the WWE. They always look slow. I ain't never seen about throw a Superman punch that was uh just super fast. That, like yo, it caught you off guard. Every time I ain't seen one, it always looked as slow. And probably the reason why they never knocked nobody out with it. Yeah, and yeah. The reason why they never knocked nobody out with it because it was always super slow and it's like, oh, I see. I see that happen. But for him, it was like, I guess he got caught because he was on one leg already falling back and he was trying to punch at the same time. Yeah. When instead of just saying, let me get my kick in there and let me get the hell out of the way. And see, what you just said there, it probably the reason why he got caught. Because most of the time, when a Superman punch is thrown, the dude is going backward. He was coming forward a little bit mm-hmm. to try to land a punch, and then he got caught. And then, it, and the thing is, it didn't even look like he hit it. He hit him flesh. No, like, no, I, I said that uh, it was a double thing. It's my uh, it was a double thing that he got hit, and then he had bounced off that mat. But he was out before the, he he he, he was maybe. out before he hit that match, man. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I said okay, he hit that goddamn mat hard as hell. And my reason for saying I think that that was the one of the big key because it still didn't look like no hard punch. Mm-hmm. Now I understand that we in the they they are in the we talking about UFC and, and then small gloves. Yeah, but I was like I ain't seen hard punches. Plenty I've been watching plenty of time. That didn't look like it was. A, a good punch that would have knocked somebody out. It looked like, like that was it. it. looked like he was off balance after he threw that kick and he was trying to throw a punch. And then that was a good little hank hank. Because his head did flip back. Mm-hmm. And then right as he fell, his head bounced out of the ground. And then you seeing him, they're like, wait. Because most of the time when people get, even when they do get knocked out kind of like that, they still have like some type of movement. He just fell. And didn't move at all. And and after that, you saw like Pettis was like concerned. Like he went over there. Yeah. Like, hey, is he all right? Cause it, I, then I think about it, I said he kind of like that. Uh, the Roy Jones when Roy Jones got knocked out by he, uh, Glenn Johnson. Yeah, he just froze. Mm-hmm. As soon as he hit, he was just froze. There wasn't no like, yo, let me roll. He was just, I'm froze. The shit gave him one of the funniest <laughs> moments <laughs> in goddamn sports history. Two of them, matter of fact, Larry Merchant. That night, and then that Monday, Michael Scrahan. Because when Roy <laughs> got caught with that punch, Larry Mercy said, Roy Jones, he was talking about, you know, him, Roy Jones getting knocked out by Antonio Tarver. He was mm-hmm. talking about that. And then as he was talking about it, Glenn Johnson landed a big shot, and he said, Roy Jones is down and hurt badly. <laughs> and hurt badly. And then that Monday, on this damn, um, best damn be- sport yeah, show. best damn sports show, that damn Michael Scrape him like, man, I thought he was dead. I thought he was dead. Mm. I was like, come on, man, stop it. They were killing Raw for that shit, dude. And she also, uh, Fat Joe made his own. Put him, put him in a lyric, and he mm. did not like that. Did not like it at all. But and now I was like, with that, I was like, damn. Wonder Boy, you you, you been taking some L's, man. I said, now, I don't know how the hell you whip Sam the two fight. Well, he did. He was getting rocked. He was just getting, he was just being saved somehow. Oh, we get Woodley. Because he was getting rocked in no fight. And mm. then he fought Till and lost that. And now he come back and he fight Pettis. And Pettis knocked the hell out of him. And now I said it was so bad because, um, Wonder Boy was doing fantastic in that fight. And then that just that one punch, man. And then mm-hmm. he went down and but that's how his shit can happen. It, and uh, that was like I, it reminded me of the earlier fight between the two women where 
Um, and I said, Kwame, I love Kwame on the um, commentary. Oh, yeah, because he, like, you might be saying something, but you don't know how, like, what, what, how the terminology of it, but then he give you that, that like, yo, there's a reason why this is happening. And he was like, in the girl fight, he was like, the reason why that girl keep getting hit with counter punches is because she just throwing her kicks and leaving herself wide open, not leaving a way to move out of the way. And then when you look at that type of kick that Thompson did, it kind of left him still in the, it was a kick that left him wide open and then he couldn't move. It wasn't no kick and then I could get the move out of the way. It was a kick. I'm just going to stay stationary. And then when I see you coming because you lunging at me, I can't do nothing but try to swing and stop your momentum. Your momentum. <laughs> and stop. Yeah, and that. And, but if you able to take my – because it, it ain't no punch that he could have thrown that we're going to stop Petty from coming forward while he moving backwards. So that punch was not going to make Petty's, like, slow up any. It, wouldn't even, probably, it probably didn't even stop hitting more minimum. Because obviously he knocked the hell out of him with this man, but but if if you um if you Thompson you got him on a rematch, right? Because you was dominating that fight. If you him, you want a rematch and quickly. I don't know about quickly. You gotta let that head heal. But maybe I mean shit. He like he probably want a rematch for everybody who wouldn't beat him, man. Well, because I'm pretty sure he felt like he was doing a good job in that time on Woodley fight. And it, actually, I did thought he won that Darren Till fight. That's just my opinion, but they say he lost. But in their fight, yeah, I, I would. Because I think most of the time when I have seen fighters who lose a fight like that, and they be like, yo, I was dominating the fight, and I just got hit with a lucky punch. Mm -hmm. And they be mad out there. I be mad. And see, that's a, the, the thing. With the crowd, if you look at that in the crowd at the time he got knocked out and they start pinning to the crowd, you can see the disappointment in the fans' face because they know, man, he was winning that fight. He had that fight in the back. And then just out of nowhere, bang, he goes down. And that's what everybody was talking about. Like, yo, how did that happen? You win a fight like that, dominated, and then just get shot, caught with a shot out of the blue. They have my lot in the UFC. Yep, that's the name of the game in UFC, though, man. All right. Next topic. Steam versus The Undertaker. Is this WrestleMania we talking? Um, no, it, he, that's the thing with Steam. Like, it, he supposed to be retired from injury, but he still be leaving it out there. Like, yeah, I would, I would come back and wrestle. I could still wrestle. But the only person I would come back and wrestle is the Undertaker. Because I seen a thing on, I think it was a wrestling zone, one of the wrestling website. And he was talking about how, yeah, that's the last person still that he want to fight. He still want, want that match against the Undertaker. He, and the only reason he didn't get the match with the Undertaker when he was in the WWE was because Undertaker was in feuds with, I think he was in a feud with Brock Lesnar, and then he went to feuding with, I think it was Bray Wyatt. So, he didn't get a chance to fight him. So, he was like, yo, I was happy for what I'd done in the WWE as far as I got to wrestle Triple H at WrestleMania and I got to fight for the, the title against Seth Rollins. But, the main reason I came to the WWE was that match against The Undertaker. And, if I could if I could still wrestle and I would still want that match. And, I'm, I think, well, last time I seen Undertaker, he didn't look that great. He didn't look that great. And I, I'm like, uh, uh, I don't know if I want that. I don't know if I want the, uh, the Undertaker and Sting. Sting, he still put on. That's the thing. Like, Sting and Undertaker probably up there in the same age. But I ain't seen him put on. Sting put on a bad performance like the Undertaker, Undertaker did. At the, uh, what was that shit called? Crown Jewel. Yeah. Yeah, they. They look like some folk, folk geezers out there. And then, and that would have, like, the thing, it would have it been different if it was like, okay, Undertaker did his thing while Kane, Triple H, and Sean Michael were the one who played nah, all uh, for him. That was a contender. Westcott looked pretty good, though. 
Who? Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels pretty much carried that, carried that match. The only problem he had when he jumped off the top and fell on the head. <laughs> <laughs> and that one thing made him say, I don't want to wrestle no more. When he fell on the head, that shit was funny as hell. Because at first, it was stories out there about, yeah, he he might wrestle for more than one match, one more, more than just that match. After that match, I don't think that, that shit hurt his confidence. <laughs> That shit hurt his <laughs> confidence. He was like, uh-uh, I don't want to do it no more. <laughs> he, went, he went on Twitter, read out them goddamn comments, yeah. like, because people were killing him out there. Yeah. Like, yo, man, this is so bad. That It would remind me of a uh, photo, I don't know if you've seen it, of Will Smith and uh, Martin Lawn on the set of Bad Boy 3. They on a motorcycle. Will is... Uh, driving the motorcycle and um, Martin is on the little cart thing beside him and they had a picture had that picture and then they had a picture of Michael Jordan when it was Michael playing for the Wizards and Scottie Pippen playing for the Trailblazers like <laughs> I was like look at these two geezers man mm -hmm. that shit was funny as hell but I would like to see it at WrestleMania. It wouldn't, and, and then my thing is, is, they would have to put that together real quick because Mania in two weeks. No, nah, I, I don't. That's my thing. I don't think he was just talking about it, like it was gonna happen. He was just still flirting yeah. around with it. Yeah, I, I think he's still like. But that's the thing. Like you never, they never have for the past couple of years with the Undertaker. They never did really have a, a um set type of uh, build up for Ante he just having to show up like the goddamn boogeyman wrestling and then leave mm -hmm. and somehow people still love it yep. so Wait. maybe they could pull it off how the hell if I know alright next topic Gronk Rob Gronkowski announced his retirement from the league Um, my question I have for you do you think Grunt retired, or do you think that Bill Belichick told Grunt that he was going to trade him so he was forced to retire? Mm, it's a combination of things. Of, of those things, I don't know. Um, for me, like if I was told, I don't know. Nah, I guess he just loved playing with Brady and didn't try to see himself playing with nobody else. So, what if Belichick did, because it was rumors that Belichick was talking about trade, thinking about trading him. So, that could have been it, but I also think that that boy career had been filled with injuries. Yeah, I, he, they say he played nine years, and I gotta ask the question: How many other years had he played a full, what twenty, twenty game plus playoff plus Super Bowl? How many of them did he just play for? Like, probably not none, not now one. That's the thing about Grunk. Like Grunk has like so many. Broken records in the tight end position, and just imagine what his numbers would be like if he wasn't having all those injuries. And then, and then, once I think about that, he came into the league with injury problem because he didn't do a pro day, didn't have a combine when he came into the league because he went. <coughs> what college did he come from anyway? The party one, Arizona. Oh, yep. You know that you 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 really had to ask that question when you see Grunk. Yeah, I I didn't know. But yeah, he came from Arizona, and though I was like, when they said it, I was like, last year they were saying it. Yeah, dude, during the Super Bowl, he was talking about how his body hurt, and it was like when players start talking about they body hurting. Yeah, you know the next thing is it, the next thing that's gonna happen is uh, that person out. Yeah. That bro, no, that ain't because big itself, like Big Ben, it won't be long for he be retiring because he was as I hear talking about, yeah, no, I think he was, he didn't say hit better hurt, he did talking about how bad he sucked. Well, that's Sam been saying that shit for four <laughs> years. Didn't like Big Ben at all. Um, it is going to be, no, I was going to say it is going to be a hit, big hit to the Patriots. It won't. Niggas won the Super Bowl without, without him. Plenty of time. Yeah. So, um, yeah. enjoy retirement, Grunk. 
Shit, you know he a big part about it. He ain't gonna be, probably gonna be a whole lot of drinking, you nasty <coughs> nigga. Hey, cut that shit out. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna let you do that because I'm cutting all that out. I'm cutting all that shit out. But, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, like I, yeah, I seen a picture where they were talking about, yeah, this is Brady after Grunk said he returned. I'm like, yeah. He ain't gonna be too upset. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Brady probably said, nigga, uh, y'all do know, like, the last four out of five Super Bowls I was in, I was in there and I almost won or did win without Grunk. Yeah. Now you telling me that, uh, Amendola is hurt. Maybe I'll tell you I might be a little sad. Nah, if you tell him that uh, the running back is hurt, he probably will tell you that. Cause he won without Elderman. Um, the running backs is pretty much the dudes who make that team go. What was season that was? I thought that was uh, the season that they played the uh, Philadelphia and they lost. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> What was that? <laughs> hey, man. I think that I'm was. I'm sleeping a little bit. I think that was the season they played Philadelphia and Law. Yeah, but shit, it went on Brady. Brady threw almost for 500 yards in that game. Yeah, he also fumbled the ball. Let's not forget that. Man, the ball was on his ass. <laughs> the way they, they should be saying the loss of Trent Brown and some of them offensive line is going to be his problem. Not no damn grunt. Yeah, but I think they're going to be fine. So. Only thing I can say is enjoy retirement, Gronk. Adios, amigo. All right. Back to some wrestling. Back to some UFC. Last night, after the pay-per-view card, Cormier was on ESPN. They were asking him about his plans of the future and he says well I don't know I may show up at Wrestlemania and make Brock Lesnar lose his title do you think he was spilling tea um, I don't think so I don't know possibly my thing is there had always, there had been rumors of them possibly trying to hire them, hire him when they go to Fox so he could be like an announcer. Um, I don't know. I like, cause it, like, I didn't see no reports of like, you know, Vent Man Man being mad. Maybe I gotta wait a couple of days. But I, cause one, I don't even really think that. Shit, as a matter of fact, I think the Vent will actually try to use that as a storyline. So maybe he did tell him. Go out there and say that. So Monday night, especially if Monday night when it when it comes on, and if they are there, Brock is there. I'm pretty sure Brock won't be there, but Paul Heyman will be there, and he'll mention something about it, and that'll give me the okay to yep, that's the storyline. And see, the, also the reason why I ask the question is because you know the WWE have a deal with ESPN. They had. That's why you saw the Miz be on there a lot. Mm-hmm. Also, Charlie Caruso and Michelle Beadle. And that's why I said when he asked him that question and he replied to it the way that he did, that's when I started thinking, like, it, it taught me two things. One, Brock is losing at WrestleMania. Whether he coming in there. But we don't really do that, though, right? No, nah, not. Fully 100%. Yeah, not 100%. But now I'm 100 percent thinking that no, he's gonna lose and he's gonna go fight Crumbie. Go for fans. Yeah, but I think it would be a good setup all the way around because, like you said, about him working for Fox, the W. He have also said him working for Fox and then him trying to transition to the WWE as an announcer. It would be a good setup if they had him there, whether he would help him Brock, you know, making sure Brock lose or just being there. It would be a good look for them. And then his trainer partner, Cain Velasquez, is 
I I guess this had been something he had said in the past, and now it just they keep talking about it more and more that he was talking about transitioning into wrestling, and I was like, I'm guessing y'all. Wow, you, Kane too. How yeah. old is Kane? Uh, he's not that old. Like when you like, I think Cormier about forty. If not, damn, if not yeah. 40. Yeah, he, yeah. So, you understand him, but I think Cain Velasquez, for what I hear anyway, like, he, I, I don't know. I know he ain't hit 30. Maybe early to mid 30s. I don't want to say late 30. I think in mid to early 30. And for what I hear, that when UFC fighters are in their prime. But he has been, he lost his last fight. So, against, I think it was Francis and Gano. Was it Francis? I think it was. So maybe he is looking at it saying, yo, my best days are ahead. What? Uh, go on. Yeah, so maybe I need to go on ahead and go get this go get this check from the UFC. From it's the, like Travis Brown. From the WWE. what I say? From the UFC. Yeah, I mean, he's still can cash in one more check. I could have and, and, you know, they also, well, them cats have to look at Ronda Ross and see how successful she have been. And this run and really be intrigued by it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I would like to see it, man, if it goes down. So next topic. Should AUS vote? Well, that's kind of hard for me to say because I'm not a voter of myself. Yeah. But, I mean, to what word is, to each his own. I mean, if you feel like and I'm not saying that, yo, I don't vote. I vote for a reason. I don't vote for a reason because I don't try politicians. Politicians say one thing, and then they get in there and do a whole other goddamn thing. But, so, and I hold them accountable. If I Even if I did, I would hold them accountable. Yeah. And this, me not voting is saying that I'm holding y'all accountable for the past deeds that y'all have not done. I feel you 100%. So, when it comes down to voting... It is like I said. It, it to each his own. My thing is, I don't want people to think because I used to hit us a lot, and it will come up again next year. That people just start telling you to go out here and vote, go out here and vote, but without really telling you who to go and vote for. Yeah, but then when they'll tell you to go vote, and then when you say who you like, they'll get mad at you because you don't like their candidate. Yeah, and so that's why I'm like, yo, when I hear this stuff. That yo, I, I always I always say that like yo, when I watch radio personality like the Breakfast Club, Hot ninety seven, anybody, and they be like yo, go out and vote. I would I would like actually like to like for you to tell me who you want me to go vote for. Or, yo, yeah, like, or, or or put me on to yeah, something that this I person then said that's good for yes, my community. Yeah, but, and, and now I would like because sometimes you just get them out there and they will just say go vote. And then they have a bunch of candidates up there who, if you pay attention, are trash. Mm-hmm. Just straight up trash. And then you start looking at it and saying, well, and then they hit you with that, oh, well, you know the Republicans are racist. Hell, I say both Republicans and Democrats are racist. Preach. So, either way, you voting for a devil. Mm-hmm. And see, this is my thing. I think the ADUS crowd, the group, I think we have to understand that when we talk about reparations, we're talking about accountability of the Democratic Party. We're talking about um, our history in this country, our lineage. But what we also are doing is holding the Democratic Party accountable. See, the problem is for the last 50 years since uh, Dr. Martin Luther King died what black people have been doing is that we have been just voting for the Democratic Party to vote against the racist Republican Party and the people who we've been voting for we haven't been holding accountable that's why the ADOS movement is special it's cause now they holding them accountable they telling them, listen, man, we need tangibles. So this is, and, and my thing, and this is why I said for the people who do vote, 
you can vote. If you have a candidate that you believe in that actually have policies that you think is going to benefit your community, you can vote for those people, but still stay on your ADOS reparation thing. Because what the Democratic Party have been lacking from us is that we haven't been holding them accountable for nothing. We just been responding to the racism of the GOP and they've been getting our vote because of that. Blindly voting. Yeah. They say, yo, we gonna do immigration and all the other stuff that they are saying, yeah, it good, but the one thing is lacking. What you gonna do for me? Uh, and see, yeah, and see, like like gay people vote them mostly vote Democratic. They do something for gay people. Latino people vote mostly Democratic. They do immigration. It, Same go for Muslim people and yeah. African people as well. And see, the the reason why I say that smoke, I say that because you can do two things. What ADOS have to do. Is be black first And then worry about the other thing Because One of the things with Trump and the Republicans Is the Supreme Court And this is the thing we have to Take into account If these people is able To put on judges And this is why I say If if you are an ADOS And you think about not voting The reason why you should Reconsider that it's because of the Supreme Court. Because these fuckers, we got what, um, Ruth Ginsburg out there. She on her last leg, people. Let's be honest. Let, let's be honest about this. And if they get to put, get another Republican in there, do you really think that old lady going to last another five, six years? With the stress of politics. Like, let's be, let's, no, she old, old as dust. I'm just saying, you add on stress, it's going to be and, cold. And not only that, you talking about, um, they talking about more tax cuts for rich people. They're going to be slashing government programs. Then you talking about circuit, circuit, cut ju- circuit court judges. So it's reasons to vote for the Democrats, but Stay on point with your ADOS reparation thing. Stay on point. Hold every last one of these people who you vote for accountable. Because this is what, when you watch the, um, the black people in the media, the boules, this is what they don't do. So when you hear them go after the ADOS movement, the reason why they are is because you had different groups. Other ADOS movement. You got some ADOS people who said, yeah, we're going to vote, but we're going to vote for the right candidate, but we're still pushing this. And then you have some people who said no tangible, no vote. So those people are the ones who they reacting against the most. Why? Because these boules only care about one thing, beating Trump. Mm-hmm. Beating Trump and because of the racism. Of him But the Democrats They're not worrying about What the hell they gonna do For our uh, black folk They don't care It's just hey man We gotta beat Trump We gotta organize and vote Um What are we getting out of this Because Politics is an exchange It's a vote to be a- Yeah You Say you gonna do this To get my vote But the thing is With us as black people is that we now have the mindset that we work for the politicians and the politicians don't work for us. I never had that thought. No, yeah. I told you. I don't. But it's the other way around. The politicians work for us. We don't work for them. So that's my whole thing with the ADOS movement. If you want to vote and you have a candidate that is talking about something, vote on the Supreme Court. Vote because of, uh, especially in your local elections, is very important. But push them, push them, man, because that's what we've been lacking. Is what y'all are doing now is pushing these people and forcing them 
on the issues pertaining to your community. And you can, you know, for gay rights or feminism and um, or whatever the matter may be. But it has to be black first. It has to be black first and then you get to the rest of those things. But be black first, man, when you vote. All right. Next topic I want to talk about is the attacks on Yvette Cardinal. Because these attacks now spank. They getting out of hand, smoke. Like, it's funny at this point. Funny. First, they were saying she was a Russian bot. Then they start saying that, oh, she dates a white woman. Now it's, oh, she's a Trump supporter. Then they said, hey, you know what? This ADOS movement is anti-immigrant. Then they said, oh, Yvette worked on the board on for immigration. I said, how can y'all attack her for being anti-immigrant and then say she supported immigrants too? I don't know. Like how, how, like, how can you say both of these things? They, I don't know. They, they, <coughs> it is. They, they, the old people come in with an agenda and they'll do anything to dissuade, confuse people, get, get people thinking thinking which every which way instead of staying on path staying straight staying going forward they give those little pit stops and probably that's what they're trying to do <coughs> now and give those give her and other people who listen to her and who support her a pit stop to sit and think and, and, and see it's almost like it's like um they never heard of a nuance nuance answer either you 100% this way or you 100% that way but it's no middle ground right so unless she only make videos about Donald Trump if she don't do that then she for Donald Trump and that's basically what they're saying if you take the approach of talking about immigration and understanding the fact that immigration is not all good for black people, ADOS people. Matter of fact, it's hard to find anything where you can point to and say this is good for African Americans. The thing is that people don't understand is about immigration is that black men have no value in the workforce. That's why so many black men are being pushed and forced into a life of crime to try to provide for their families because the immigrants who are coming across the border, they are taking their jobs. Why? Because they're willing to do those jobs for very low money. Two dollars no. They don't want to pay black men, and not even just black men, but Latino men are hurt by immigration. Uh, Mexican American, and that's why you see that. When you see things with black people, it, it makes no sense. When you see black people support immigration more than Mexicans do, it tell you, like, black people, what are we doing? That even those people are saying, you know what? I may be for the DACA kids staying here, but we need to do something about immigration. But they're not even thinking about the value of black men in the workforce and how... The immigrants coming to the country from the border, how it is that they hurt African American value. Like I said before, if you was living with a woman and that woman was paying all the bills at the crib, do you think you can trash that woman? You would. If you're scum bad, you could. No, you couldn't. There's no way you could. Because you'll be scared that that girl gonna throw your behind out. But if you were had your own money 
and you was doing good, you wouldn't allow that woman to get away with shit with you. Because you were like, shit, I, I move out. I do this. But when you look at America, what you see is that America has no value for black men. Why? Because we can just bring in these people from Mexico, <coughs> from Mexico and replace them in the workforce. So the only way for America to stop locking up black men, for America to stop, to start investing in black men, they going to have to tighten up the border. We can't be out here pushing for immigration and then talking about we pro-black when immigration is hurting black males. When you look at certain places in this country and you see 50 and 60% of young black men are unemployed, this is a country that doesn't see any value in them because they can replace them. So if you come in with a nuanced answer like that, they will say, you anti-immigration. No, everything has a point. To When you get to a point and you say, okay, I'm for this to this point, but now this is hurting my people. This is hurting my people now. So when if you say something like that, oh man, you, you, you pro-Trump now. Nah, nigga, I'm pro-black. The problem is with y'all is y'all see immigration through the lens of racist white people. This is what the Democratic Party have conditioned you to. Because we as African Americans have been discriminated against so much in this country smoke. We know how that shit feels. So when we see Republicans doing that shit to other groups, it makes us want to come to their aid. Without us thinking to ourselves, wait a minute, is this good for us, though? Yeah. But my thing is, that we come to their aid, you would think no people, well, I, I, I won't say all. Yeah, of course not all, but some of those people are accidentally against black people. Like, yo, nigga, we just didn't have y'all back. The spicy white. And they're like, how can you do that? Because, like you said, mostly black people, all a uh, very high percentage of black people, <coughs> vote high for immigration, while Latino people. But man, I, man, I think they count African and all that stuff in the same category. Of black people, I don't know if yeah. it's split. So, but for the old people too, it's like yo, we are there with y'all. But somehow, somewhere, when we say start talking about things for us. It's, it's a all, problem. It's all about, it start with it. What about it? It's a problem, and it like we never did that about you. We never say yo, I. Right, but what if y'all get this and we don't? We just say yo, we want y'all here, man. We want y'all to share in this this lie <laughs> that, that America is the land of the free, or dreams come true because that was a total lie. But for some, damn sure one for black people. Yeah, and see. And that's my whole thing, like the ba- like the doctor kids. I understand. I don't want to see no family split up, but man, they get to a point in time, like in your family, and all y'all black folks who listen to this, and poor whites who listen to this, or Mexicans who listen to this, y'all understand when you have to tighten your belt. It be times where you go out to eat and watch movies, and you order that NFL package. That NBA package, major league package, or whatever. But then your hours start getting cut on your job. Your old lady, hours start getting cut on your job. And you start saying, look here, boo. We got to take our belt. We can't be spinning like this. Mm-hmm. We can't be spinning like this. And this is where it have come to immigration. It come down to now where, okay, immigration from a below the border, allowing people to come in. Okay, let them come in. But when it starts to affect Americans where they cannot find work and feed their children to the point where they have to commit crimes, 50% of the population that's in jail now is in there for poverty crimes. These are people, man, who have been pushed to commit crimes to try to make a living in the greatest country in the world. 
they are replacing us in the workforce for low labor, bro. And we as African Americans, as ADOS, we have to get to the point where we start saying, we're going to force this country to start seeing value in our black men so they won't they be tossing them away and making money off of them in private prisons. All right. Roland Martin. Roland Martin. One of the things, man, about um, the Boulay crowd. I seen today Roland Martin was talking about like organizing and getting out the vote and all of this stuff. I see Roland Martin all the time and talk about things. And one of the things that he talked about the 1960s and stuff and one of the things people don't talk about pertaining to the 1960s is that it was three groups that was working to do civil rights. But America only tell you about one. And that one they tell you about is Martin Luther King Jr. in the civil rights movement. But that's all they got. No, no, but see, they hide. They want to hide the, the truth. See, the truth is, is that Martin Luther King Jr., when it got shit done, if it wasn't for Stokely Carmichael and the Black Power Movement, Michael X and the Nation of Islam, see, LBJ, John F. Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, thought Martin Luther King Jr. was a joke. They thought he was a con man. They didn't take him serious at all. But once Stokely Carmichael started coming and talking about black empowerment, how black people needed this much money and we should have our own land and our own, you know, banks, share crops and all of that, they got afraid of him. They became afraid of him. They was afraid of Malcolm X. So... Martin Luther King understood that, okay, these folk wouldn't talk to me, but now they are. They calling me now to try to calm down Michael, calm down Stokely. But you know the thing you never seen MLK do? He never dis- denounced Martin Luther King, um, LBJ, not LBJ, but Malcolm X. Malcolm X and Stokely Carmichael. He never denounced them. Okay. And see, this is a thing that you see from Roland Martin and people like Roland Martin that get on my nerves. Roland Martin, he loves to take his little shots at Yvette Cardinal, Tone, Tariq Nasheed. He be slick this in Black Authority. Black Professor. I said, Roland Martin has to understand that, man, if you for black empowerment, you need the black radicals. You need the black radicals. You need people that are going to force the Democratic Party to have to deal with your types, the boule crowd. But without the black radicals, it's going to be what you dudes have been for 50 years. You just sitting there scrawling the fence. But I, I, I feel like they are, they're okay with the, like I said, I feel like they, those people like him, they're okay with the status quo because they are in there. Yeah, but see, they're not king. They're not king. And that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you, I break this shit down in groups. You have like the ADUS movement. The ADUS movement is like Stokely Carmichael in the black. Black empowerment movement Then you have Tariq Nasheed and Black Professor And then Black Authority They like Malcolm Malcolm was out there telling black people not to vote <laughs> Like not to vote And That's kind of like what Tariq them are doing No tangibles no vote But the thing is The Boulay crowd They supposed to be the, the king They supposed to be king them 
The thing is that these niggas are not King. Them niggas are Jesse Jackson and John Lewis. See, when Dr. King was out there holding uh, the Democratic the Party accountable, after they had did the civil rights in 1964, he wanted to go to Chicago, fight for the Housing Act. John Lewis and Jesse Jackson, them niggas wanted to go home. And they were trying to talk him into going home. And King told them, he said, man, don't y'all understand that we're going to die doing this? We're not going to make it to 50. Them dudes were scared, man. They was ready to go home. And when King lost his life in 68, black people became scared to speak out. And them baby boomers have let us down for the last 50 years. And this is what Roland Martin, he represent that crowd. But the thing is about Roland, he is in and out. He in and out of doing the right thing, saying the right thing, but then doing the wrong thing. Because I seen him on NSNBC right after the election. And he said, yo, black people are being tired, are tired of being the Democratic Party side chick. But then the next time he get around, he run out advocating for black people to just vote for the Democrats without any yeah, compensation man, whatsoever. Man, gave me a key that, 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 that hint that, hey, you know if you talk good about us, uh, we'll put you back on TV again. And, 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 and see, that's my problem with cats like Roland Martin. And, he, and Roland Martin is a smart brother. I know this. But he seemed to not understand the role that Stokely Carmichael and... Sure Malcolm X played. No, he doesn't. He doesn't talk about them like that. I ain't never seen him bring up Stokely Carmichael, period. I, I heard him bring him up in, like, when somebody else bring them up in that, you know, some way he would try to bring them up and say, this is what they was about and this is how they went by things. No, nah, like, he liked to bring up Marcus McGarvey. Oh, yeah, that's who it was. I'd be confused. And so it like Cause you rarely You rarely hear people Talk about Stokely Carmichael bro Possibly and Yeah I, Hey I rarely hear people That talk about Malcolm X like that Yeah They hit him Just like they hit The Black Panthers I'm telling you Who our heroes were Who were really fighting For Black empowerment They hit him How much do you ever hear about Um Or How They weaponized the few speeches that Martin Luther King had. They don't tell you the they don't play the speeches of him telling the White House people to, yo, we're gonna come over there and we're gonna get our check. Thank you. Or Thank you. I think it was one of those when he was saying that the I have a dream speech. Was a nightmare. Yes. Yep. They don't play those. And also, don't forget about when he said that the Civil Rights Act. He said, "I segregated my people into a burning building." Yeah, they don't, they don't play the old. They they play the ones that 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 goddamn. I dream of a day yeah, that white people kum, and black people can eat at the same table. Yeah, they like kumbaya that. shit. They play that because people are fall for it. But they don't play the older one because yeah, make y'all. He come back out. He comes back out after realizing. Wait a minute, I could have won about this another way. And and, and see. And that's what people don't understand, man, is that what the ADOS movement is really about is finishing, clean, finishing King's work. King lost his life fighting for the poor people campaign because he understood. He understood at that moment that, hey, man, and that's the thing that bothers me so much about black people is that black people have allowed white people and the black church to make them believe that they can overturn 300 years of slavery, 100 years of Jim Crow with a college degree. And I'm looking at it saying, black people, you do know MLK had a goddamn um, degree when he was like 18, 19 years old. But he was still out there fighting for civil rights. He was still out there fighting against Vietnam. But he died fighting for unions and fighting for the poor people campaign. What the hell make, what have changed since 1968 for you to make you believe that you can just make it with a college degree? What? Let me know. Let me know which poor white person is out here just making it, making it do what it do with a college degree. White people is able to do better with a college degree because they have inheritance. 
Like I was telling you, 60% of the wealth in America is inherited. So these white people have homes that their parents are passing down to them. Their parents is paying goddamn their college off. We coming out of college with $70,000 worth of debt. Yeah, I, I agree. I said poor people. Huh? Like the poor white people. No, the poor white people got housing too. Shit, I didn't know that. Smoke. White people in this country without a high school diploma or a college degree got more wealth than a black oh, person no, I know those with a like, college like degree. Like I said, I didn't know they had that, uh, the damn housing. Well, yeah, I they got the housing. They got the land. I should have, because I do hear white people who say, yeah, for the white people who are doing bad, you ain't using your white privilege right. But the white people in this country who are doing bad are four times more likely to be doing better than black poor people are. Hell, they do better than black people with a college degree. Mm-hmm. That And see, this is the problem with people like Bernie Sanders when they be talking about social economics. The old saying goes, if a white man got the, a cold and a black man got the flu, you can't prescribe them the same medicine because one of them is sick. One of them is sick, bro. And my whole thing is with cats like Roland is that he didn't got dragged in. He in and out. He in and out of being pro-black and then tribalism for the Democratic Party. That's a lot of them. A lot of them, damn. Yeah. Damn, they're all of them in the media class are this way. They they wanna they wanna be pro black, but then they things of I I just don't get it. like the things you would think that for me like I said the people black people who know about reparations and things of that nature I would think all black people would be like yeah mm-hmm. let's get it but if you black and you saying I don't think we can we can do that well then I'm pretty sure. It, with the civil rights, it will people out there saying, I don't know if we can do that. With gay rights, I don't know if we can do it. was a lot of shit that I, hell, it was a lot of shit I have heard people say, we ain't got the money for it. Like right now, Trump keep talking about the goddamn wall and people keep saying, we ain't got the money for it. And he's saying, yeah, we do. Yeah. And, and see, this is when, this is when you look at it and you see that with the ADOS movement, Anytime with reparations, these motherfuckers don't have any political ma- um, imagination. But they have an imagination about a health care plan, universal health care. A war. They have an imagination about free college. They have an imagination about $16, 17 minimum wage. But then when it comes to black people, there's no imagination. They wake up. <laughs> See... When it was this HR 40 bill, which is bullshit, if you read through it, it's about getting people together to have a commission. Now, Sheila Jackson in the bill say, well, the president should pick three people. So Trump would be picking those three people. Nancy Pelosi should pick the three. She's going to pick three centrist motherfuckers. And then Charles Chuck Grassley, who's a Republican, he going to pick three people. So we're going to have nine, end up with nine white men on the goddamn reparation board. What the hell y'all think going to come out of that? Nothing good for black people. Nothing good for black people. You know what's going to be happening? They going to start playing the game the same way they did with affirmative action. Affirmative action was a program started for the descendants of slaves, and all of a sudden it became the universal program. And the reason why they did this is because they know they would never have to pay black people, really pay black people. Why? Like I said earlier, so many black men are out here scrapping at the age of 13, 14 years old, trying to be providers and add money to the household, selling drugs or whatever, committing crimes. So them guys are never going to graduate high school. To get to college. So you have 25% of African Americans that make it to college. So guess who's going to benefit from affirmative action? The immigrants, white women. Everybody who ain't black. Everybody who ain't black. So this is why when you talk about reparation, is what you said. What Dr. King say, Spank? 
I want my check. I want my check. I want my check. I, I don't want to hear this bullshit talking about, hey, black people, one of the things we're going to do, we're going to give y'all some land in the Midwest. Give me my money and I can buy my own land. Yeah, cow. Yeah, I can get that. Give me the check. Oh, man, we what we'll do, we'll set up a, a reparation program so for historical black colleges. The majority of the people that go to historical black colleges is either white or immigrants. How is it benefiting African Americans? I don't feel like they know the, that. They know this shit. Hell yeah, they know it. That's why they gonna do this type of shit. Cause they know. Nah. We'll do these programs. And that's the thing when you saw with Bernie, right? Well, Bernie, he was like, well, I don't think it should be cash. Well, Jewish, them people got cash. The Indians got cash. The Japanese got cash. But now you want to start talking about Doing it another way for black people. Why? But my thing is that because they still say it's some countries now who still dabble in slavery. And once those people once to get out of they get out of their slavery, you know what they would be possible because it it been done for them. It just hasn't been done for black people in America. You know what be what would be waiting for them after they finally done something for those people in slavery? Money. Yeah. Some form of <coughs> help to some form of help for all the suffering they had to go through. And I and, and I said, yo, ADOS is just talking about sl- reparation. They ain't even talking about how they was held out of the New Deal. Because that much really, really affected them too in the 1930s. They ain't even talking about that. Because that's what made the hu- huge, huge disadvantaged against black people then was in the 30s when they held them out of the new deal that's why white people got 95 percent of the wealth and 96 percent of the land then when they was raising them taxes from 1930 to 1965 on the highest earners to 75 to 95 percent to pay for the land and the housing and lowering the interest rate so white people can buy homes and kept us out of it. Same thing when you talk about the GI Bill. Where soldiers was going into the military. Black people fighting for this country. They white dudes were coming home. They was giving them homes. Giving them homes. Giving them jobs. They weren't giving black people shit. So. Those. And that's why I said. ADOS really being easy on y'all. Just talking about reparations. But I said it got to get to a point where we have to stay on code on this reparation thing. Fully. You can still go out there and vote for the people, but man, you got to be black first. Then we can get to the rest of these other people. All right, man, last topic. I'm going to ask you. Is the ADOS movement anti-African? Are you anti-African smoker? Hell no. <laughs> I, I, my thing is when you see these people, they feel that way because there's one key word. When you start talking about AD, when ADOS people, we are focusing on this reparation thing, and the one word they get stuck on is if a black people. And when we say black people, we mean descendants of slaves in America. If you, and, and that's what they get stuck on. The, wait a minute, hold on. If it was just black people, they would have been right on over there cheering along. But when you start saying, Jeff for black people in America, the sinners of slaves, that mean they left out. Yeah, but see, you, you're right. But it's another component too. Every I, I don't care what group you have, right? Whatever group that that is made up, you always gonna have some bad apples. Some knuckleheads. Yeah, you have some knuckleheads. apples. But and see, one of the things you can't do, you can't do with white people though. And what white people do, racist white people, is that racist white people are always judging white people by their best examples while judging minorities by their worst. Mm-hmm. So this is what you see Africans, some Africans are doing. They hear some of these folks 
And they're like, man, these people are anti-immigrant. I said, listen, Africans who believe that ADOS is anti-African. The way white supremacy works here in the States is that white people, because they have all the money, they own all the TV networks, they control our images. They also control your images. So in the 1970s, when black people wanted to be in film so bad, because they was doing blackface before. So black people wanted to be in film. So white people said, we'll put you in film. Okay, we'll put you in film. So they started doing black exploitation films. Had black people as pimps, hoes, go around white people calling black people niggas and black people were beating them down. It made black people feel powerful that they were fighting the man. But at the same time, what white people were doing were playing with their images. And they were sending these type of images all across the world telling everybody that this is what black people are. So, what was they doing to Africans? Here, you know what they was doing to Africans? They was painting to African, painting to African Americans that Africans were these poor, if you have $2 a day, you can help this little kid here. That's the way they was, they was painting the African brothers and sisters on the commercials here. That's how they was painting them. So what we have is, we have some Africans that come to America and they spray African Americans with white racist propaganda tropes. That black people are lazy. Because these people don't know our lineage. They don't know our history here in this country. They don't know what have happened to us. What they know is what white people have shown them through film and through hip hop. See, we have all of these you know, gospel rappers, conscious rappers floating in the inner city. None of them can get record deal. But if a, if a dude get on there and talk about slapping hoes, popping pills. popping pills and shooting folks, white folks throw them on the radio quickly. If See how they throw Cardi B on, how they throw Nicki Minaj on. This, all of these women are a character, a stereotype of black women, hip-hop-wise, all of this. But the images have an effect because they're sending these images all across the world saying that this is what black women are. This is what black men are. So that's why so many African immigrants come here and have these bad thoughts about African Americans. But then on the other side, you have African Americans following the bullshit that white people have painted about Africans here. Through the media, this is how white supremacy works. If you go and watch what they done done to Asian men, Asian white pe- white men have a fetish for Asian women. So they painted Asian men as small dicks, dudes, <laughs> silly. Ask yourself a question: How come it's not a Asian Brad Pitt, an Asian Shannon Tatum, an Asian Tom Cruise? It never been. The reason why it never been is because they was stigmatizing and dehumanizing Asian men so they can get their Asian women. What was the results? You know what the results were? 54% of Asian women marry white guys. See, Asian women is into high tech. Who's all the, you a gamer. Every time you play a video game, who's the good guys and the heroes of the video game smoke? White people. Hell, white. that's in movies as Yeah, well. white dudes. White dudes. This is how you play with people images. And they have played with Africans' images to African Americans, and they have played with African American images to Africans. And that's where it creates the divide. So when you hear Yvette Carnell, people say, oh, Yvette, she's anti-African. I said, No. Pay attention to who she's talking about. She's talked about what the girl named Cynthia Evo, Elvo, whatever her name is. She's from she's from the uh, UK, an African. She made 
these coonies comments about African Americans. If not only that, go and read on the movies that she was just in with um with the sister named Viola Davis. When they start talking about racism and stuff in the United States, she didn't know anything. Viola Davis had to check her. But she was going out here making racial stereotypes, using racial propaganda against African Americans. Issa Rae did the same thing. The little moose, the little Nigerian girl who played on the show Insecure, she did the same thing. The black boy that played in the movie Get Out, he did the same thing. And this is the thing I had to say to my African brothers. We as African Americans, man, we call out coon house niggas, bet rents, Uncle Tom's in our own group. Why the fuck you think we're not going to call them out when they in your group too? And see what you guys are doing, the Africans, y'all are pulling the white folk. See, when we start talking about racist white people, some white folks start feeling that, hey, I'm under attack. No, if you ain't a racist white person, we ain't talking to you. Mm-hmm. See, we have to stop allowing the bad people amongst us to get the good people amongst us to fight each other. Because that's what they do. The same way with men and women. People who don't know how to internalize their pain correctly go around here talking about women ain't shit, women are hoes, women are this. Black men, black women be talking about black men are trash, black men the weakest link. We hear this type of talk and two things happen. One, black men start caping for black men. Black women start caping for black women. But we don't understand that these two groups, the bad ones amongst us, is one that have us, the good people, fighting against each other. And we have to stop that shit. But also, that when you see this, it's it, it crazy to me because we talk about cool black people, African people, Latino people, whoever. They take cues from white people. But when you look over there at white people, you don't see white people going against each other, butting head with each other. I never see white dudes out here saying, yeah, you know, these white women out here ain't shit. I'm going go here and find me a black girl because I'm black. You ne- I never see that. You, you never see it. The same way, like, you know. Hell, we had the thing with the white women in the Mo- Me Too movement. See how shit that have fast that shit faded away? But do you see any white women out here talking about white men are trash? Yeah, anymore. White men are trash. White men are this. White men are that. No, you know who you see doing that? Some black women. Mm-hmm. Hell, you got Asian women. You Asian women are in like you ain't. I, you mean tell me it ain't no Asian man out here raping no Asian women? Yeah, but the see, you never hear him saying that. But hell, white like we just said, Asian people, Asian women date fifty percent. Of white men in America. I ain't heard an Asian woman come out here and say anything bad about how bad these white dudes are treating them, even though there's videos online circling. Slapping the hell out of them. Yeah, almost every day of them knocking five for them. Yeah, and see, that's what I'm saying about us, man, as African Americans and, 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 and Africans. We have to stop allowing the bad people amongst us to control the conversation, man. See, we doing exactly what white people have done to us. Exactly what they have done to us is to judge us by our worst examples. We have to focus on the great examples and we have to call out the coons who are African American. We have to call out the coons who are Africans, who are Haitians, who are Caribbean because every through our history, man, the coons have always undermined us. At every turn. We have to deal with them. We can't just sit back and not, you know, not call them out because they have undermined us all the time. Like when you talk about like bet wrenching black women, you have to call bet wrenching black women out because they kept us in slavery another hundred years. Why? 
Because every single time we tried to escape slavery in a slave revolt, them hoes would go back telling massa. Because they was in love with their slave master because them bitches was too lazy to envision a life where they had to work for their own. And they was comfortable being in that house with massa. Yeah, I was going to say some fucked up shit. Yeah. Being a massa little nut rag. Sorry, That's man. why when you hear these black women out here today who be out here praising Zaddy and saying black men is the weakest link, black man is trash, we got to handle those bitches. The same way with the bed bucks who be out here trashing black women. We got to handle them. We can't just sit back and not call them out. And so talking about some unity of pan-Africanism. No, we can have pan-Africanism, but the coons have to be dealt with. No matter whether they African, Haitian, goddamn Caribbean, or African-American, the coons must be dealt with. The bed rents, the mammies, the bed bucks, Bed rich, they must be dealt with and they will be dealt with. But the, some of the Africans like, man, we on attack. You ain't on attack by nobody. How the fuck you going to be on the attack for the people who fought for your ass to come to America in the first place? Y'all niggas have forgot about the Immigration Act of 1965. We the one who fought for you to get here. Why would we be attacking you? We attack coons, and we attack coons in our own race. So what the hell make you think we ain't going to get on your group when y'all come over here cooning too and kissing white ass? What type of shit is that? And you know, the thing is, too, Spank, about these immigrants, somehow the black immigrants, when they see people like Daniel Caesar, they get they almost act as they don't see these motherfuckers, man. Yeah. They act like they don't see them. Don't hear them. As or, it, or that little chick that was on um I think it was Love and Hip Hop who at first it looked like she had uh bleach on her skin. But it come to find out that no, she had did it to basically show I think she was like uh Haitian or something. Because she kind of like, uh, what, what the hell that girl, Amara, Amara or not, Lala, La, 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 I don't know how to say it. Amara La, 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 Yeah. Uh, she is uh, Afro-Latino. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but she was that too. Meaning she a black woman who speaks Spanish. Yeah, but I I was thinking that, I don't know, I, I remember the chick, I can't think of her goddamn name right now, but people, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. She yeah. had bleached skin. And she was like, I did this to show how even people in my race are discriminate against me because I'm black. Because I'm dark and skinny. And Amara has said the same thing about people being discriminate of her. Or why does she act like, why does she say she Afro-Latino? Or why does she do this this way? It's like, no, it's people in your race or in your ethnicity that are coons. Yeah. And they need to be called out and they need to be checked. It's a lot that need to be done, but checking and calling them out, it'll do. You're right. And see, this is my thing about Africans. Africans who believe in pan Africanism, as I do, you got must uh, start understanding, bro. We cannot do anything for Africa in our current state, bro. Hell, we can't even do anything for ourselves in our current state. We have to get our due so we can do something for Africa. We can't do shit for Africa sitting over here with 2.5% of the wealth and less than 1% of the land, man. We can't do nothing. We are here dreaming of Wakanda. It's just a dream. To bring that dream to reality, bro, we're going to have to get our debt. We got to get our debt that owed to us, man. That's what we have to do. And I see some of these cats out here talking about, man, all black people supposed to get reparation from the United States of America. Blackness cannot sue whiteness, bruh. 
blackness cannot sue whiteness. What happens when we talking about lineage? See, you have to understand that white people in America don't owe black people shit. The United States government do. Everything that happened to us from white people, the government of the United States of America allowed that to happen. They allowed slavery to happen. They allowed Jim Crow to happen. They allowed discrimination in banking and loans. The GI Bill holding us out of the New Deal. The night Reagan with his drug war. Nixon with his drug war. Bill Clinton with his drug war. Mayor Bloomberg with stop and frisk. The United States government allowed all these things to happen. That's why when Martin Luther King Jr., he didn't go to each and every last one of the stores in the South talking about we're going to go through one by one to get these stores shut down. No, he went out to the people who allowed them to put those no colored people a lot signs on their restaurants and on water fountains. So you cannot sue whiteness. Africa has a claim. Africans have a claim for reparation. It's not here in the States. It's in Africa against the European countries that fucked them over. The same way Haiti has a claim against France. The Caribbeans are now suing a European country and they just won some money. Did I get a check? Nope. I didn't get no check. You know why I didn't get no check? Because I'm not Caribbean. I have no claim in the Caribbean. But I do have a claim where? Here in the United States of America. I have a claim here. You cannot sue whiteness. You, you can't have a claim against whiteness. Our claim is not against whiteness, man. As ADOS, our claim is against the United States of America. And that's why we are here. This is why we are pushing for this ADOS thing. And this is why we're telling you that lineage matters. One of our people who said, it do, is, is lineage Lineage or credential? Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, lineage is a credential. Because what happened to us? Chattel slavery in America happened to ADOS. It didn't happen to Caribbeans. It didn't happen to Africans. It didn't happen to people in Haiti. They had their slavery and stuff by other Europeans. America is the one who did it to us. Y'all supposed to have y'all own ADOS movement. Caribbean DOS or whatever. African DOS against those countries. European country that did it to y'all. Why the hell Spain? They ain't doing the same thing that we trying to do. Because they see us as... Mm. Yeah, you remember that video you showed me of the dude who actually went to Africa and some of the people, some of the African people over there were basically saying, yo, black people from America are militant. Yes, militant. And I'm looking at that saying, what's wrong with about that? Yeah. And see, I saw this video. I showed it to you. You showed me shit. I did show you goddamn that. And see, one of the things I, I want ADOS people to realize is that the Africans that you see here in the United States is not the Africans who live in Africa. The African, the people in Africa, they understand. I was in a video about the black brother over there in Africa and he was telling them about how Nelson Mandela screwed them over. That Nelson Mandela didn't hold the white people accountable so nothing has changed in Africa since the apartheid. 
Africa is a country that uh, is a continent that's 90% black and white people own all the land and have all the money. Nelson Mandela was a scam. He sold Africans out. That's what Africans are talking about. They saying, man, they over there fighting. They over there fighting, talking about, man, Nelson Mandela. We celebrate Nelson Mandela, but he sold us out. And the same thing here in the States, and this is why when black people be talking about Pan-Africanism, no, we can be Pan-Africanists. But man, we cannot be blind that we have sleeper cells amongst us. Because if we do that, like you watch Africa, Africa, 90% black, white people own all the money and land there. The reason why that is, is because Africans are tribal. They able to look at their groups and then guess what happened? All of their politicians over there is black, but all of them is in the pocket of who? The United States of America. In other European countries, I was reading a report the other day that talked about how the aid that America sends to Africa, it doesn't help Africa. Why? Because all of the European countries are going over there looting Africa. Why do they get to do that? You know why? Because the black politicians in Africa is in the pocket of these white folks. And how they choose to fool us is because we believe so much in uh, uh, tribalism and pan-africanism where if we that's why you gotta call out the coons you gotta call out the house niggas the bat bucks and the bat rich because if you don't you'll start supporting them people just out of identity politics and tribalism and help the rich keep getting richer yes help them keep getting richer well, that's why you, you gotta call them out poor and poor yeah that's why you have to call those people out man and that's why I said when people are like, oh, man, y'all ain't pan-African. No, man, I'm a pan-Africanist. I be- love Marcus McGarvey. Love Shirley Shism. Love Malcolm X. Support all of them. But you talking about pre-1965 black immigrants. When the sellouts took over. Yes. Pre-65, man, we was lived in a segregated country. Where all the black people in this country lived amongst each other in impoverished communities. Uh, Malcolm X, McGarvey, and Charlotte. Looked at, looked at each other as we are one. One. As one. Not no more that, uh, no, we are better than you. Yes. But see, the thing is that a lot of the, uh, my pan African brothers don't seem to realize is that after 1965, the 64 Civil Rights Act, Black people was able to move to the suburbs. The black people who was coming in, the Africans, 50% of Africans who come to America has a college degree already. So a lot of my African brothers and sisters were raised in white spaces. And see, just like white people, white people... Teach their children to be raceless. That's why white people always say, I don't see color. I always wonder what the hell they do at red lights. That they don't see color. But their parents raised them that way. But you know what happens? They still raise in all white communities. So what happens is they raise around some racist white people. So when racist white people start saying racist things, they pick up on it. They don't know that it's racist. They don't know that it's racist. So then when you hear white people say something racist and they say, man, I'm not racist. I got black friends. They talking about suburban African-Americans and black immigrants. That's who they friends are. See, Africans, they're not anchored in blackness the way they was pre 1965 some more those are the ones who be out here telling Yvette Carnell talking talking to 
Tone Talks. I got a lot of them in my comment section saying, yeah, man, y'all rock it. Keep doing what y'all doing because we got some coons amongst our group. They understand it, the black ones who come from inner city, who is anchored in blackness. But the suburban African-American, a lot of them are coons. A lot of them are house niggas. A lot of them are Uncle Tom's. A lot of them are bed wrench. A lot of them are bed bucks. Same for the Africans. So if I call those people out, why you think I'm not going to call out the Africans? My question to you is, why you ain't calling out the Africans? You know why you're not? Because you practicing tribalism. You, can't, you, 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 you cannot be a pan-Africanist and practice tribalism. That would be like a man putting his gender ahead of his race. Allowing men to mistreat women and siding with them because he a man. And protecting them. See, what a lot of y'all Africans have to understand is this, man. You have to understand that the people who you call your friends, who are part of your tribe or part of your people, you have to understand whether or not those people really want a friend or they want someone to validate their poor behavior. And a lot of my African brothers who are going to ADOS, what y'all are doing is validating the bad Africans' poor behavior. You're not acknowledging that. And you're not acknowledging that in your pursuit of pan-Africanism. But I'm telling you, I'm warning you, the very people who you think you're protecting, they're going to be our, our downfall. They have been in the past, and they will be in the future. I don't care what black group you're talking about, whether it's African-American, Caribbean, Haitian, Haitian, Africans or whatever The coons Must be called out bro Must be dealt with What you think Smoke I agree So we gonna end this show Hit the like button Subscribe Um Man go over there and check out the uh Living Smoke Gaming channel Smoke is playing. Um, I'm just here. I'm playing. Talk to be playing. Devil may cry. I got that anthem up. I'm gonna put up some new stuff for the for y'all. But yeah, subscribe. Hit that like button. Donate if you can, so we can build the channel up more. Bring more content. Get better equipment, man. So we can, you know, do a better show. Produce a better show. And we thank y'all for the uh, many subscribers. The many subscribers, man, that we got over these past three, four days. Black people, we really represented for us. We thank y'all for that. And we're going to keep fighting for this ADOS movement. We're going to continue being black first because that's all we got. That's all we can do. We black first and then we'll get to everything else. But peace, man. We'll see y'all next time.